Come join me on my second channel, Jaguar Gator 8, where we'll talk all things college football. New video drops every Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern. Click the card in the upper right corner to watch the latest video. And now, on with our feature presentation. Who doesn't love a good snow game? Who doesn't love a game that's played on a field of white, where snow is flying all over the place, and where the elements truly take over? It's not often that you get true snowballs where the field is covered and where everyone is freezing, but when it happens, it can be a beautiful sight. Some of the most iconic moments in NFL history, from the snowplow game, to the tuck rule, to the wild two minutes in 2013 between the Baltimore Ravens and Minnesota Vikings, where 36 points were scored in the final 127 seconds, have taken place with the field blanketed in snow. I think most of us can agree that snow games are awesome, and that whenever a good game is taking place in the snow, it is a special thing to see. However, there are two types of games with the snow. There are the first kind which are the games that take place in the snow because Mother Nature takes over, and there's nothing that humans can do about it. In a battle of man versus nature, no matter how hard man tries, nature comes out on top. Every time the grounds crew tries to shovel the snow in between breaks of the action, it's no use, as their hard work is solely two seconds later by more snow. The snow plows are brought onto the field to clear up the field, and the field is completely blanketed again three minutes later to the point where it's hard to believe there's a giant grass field underneath that pile of snow. Sometimes, Mother Nature just wins despite your best efforts, and you can't compete against it. That's not what we're talking about today. Because the second type of game is the game that takes place in the snow that doesn't have to be a snow game, and wouldn't have been a snow game if not for the incompetence of the grounds crew. This is the case of a crew that should have been ready for snow to come, and should have had men ready, but the field was an absolute mess for no reason. It didn't have to be this way, as with just a smidge of preparation and effort, the game could have been played on a somewhat normal field. Alas, that did not happen, and it left a ton of people, including one of the most prominent figures in the NFL, furious. In 2003, the Pittsburgh Steelers played the New York Jets in a highly controversial snow game. Because of the eyes of Steelers chairman Dan Rooney, this snow game could have easily been avoided, and the field did not have to be the white blanket that it was. And this is the story behind the most controversial snow game in the over 60-year history of the New York Jets franchise. Before I talk about the actual controversy and the feud between Dan Rooney and the officials of Giants Stadium, we need some context to understand the game and how everything was going. It's December 14, 2003, and we have a Week 15 game on our hands between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the New York Jets. There were just three games left in the season, and of all the games on the schedule this week, this battle between the Steelers and the Jets was definitely one of them. Look, the 2002 season for both of these teams went really well, with the Jets and Steelers both making it into the divisional round and winning their respective divisions. But the 2003 season was incredibly disappointing, and couldn't end fast enough. Both the Jets and Steelers entered this game at 5-8, with the Jets sitting last in their division, and the Steelers sitting in third. The loser of this game would officially be eliminated from the playoffs and finish below 500, but the winner was also in danger of being mathematically eliminated from the playoffs by the end of the day, as both teams sat three back of the final wild card with three to play. Unless you were a fan of either of these teams, or you had a fantasy playoff matchup that was hinging on the success of a player on either one of these teams, odds are you did not care about this matchup. But even though this game was pretty meaningless on the field, there was one element that was about to make things a little bit more interesting. And that was the fact that there was going to be a lot of snow hitting New York City and East Rutherford, where the game was being played. What was somewhat odd was that the New York metropolitan area was hit with a blizzard the week before, which brought over a foot of snow to the region. And now, New York was about to be hit with another 3-5 to five inches of snow in the span of a few hours. When all was said and done, the storm brought 5.8 inches. The storm was not a surprise snowstorm that no one saw coming. It had been predicted for quite a few days, and as someone that grew up in New York for two decades, I can count on one hand the number of times I was genuinely surprised to wake up one day and see snow outside. Bert Baroff said it best on the news that snow was coming this Sunday, saying, To be too involved with the weather is like hitting your head against the wall. It snows in the winter, and hopefully, it's sunny in the summer. Everyone knew after this forecast and after the low moved off the Gulf of Mexico into the Northeast that it was more likely than not that this Week 15 game was going to be played in snowy conditions. What was somewhat bizarre was the fact that amazingly enough, this game was projected to be the first time ever 
that the Jets played a snow game at Giants Stadium. The last time they hosted a snow game was all the way back on December 12, 1982, when in front of a crowd of just over 28,000 people at Chase Stadium, they defeated the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 32-17. Since moving across the Hudson into New Jersey, they had yet to host a snow game. Now that's not to say that Giants Stadium hadn't had experience with snow before. There were piles of snow the week before when the Giants played, and they hosted a game at the end of the 1995 season against the San Diego Chargers. Which, the less said about that one, the better. But this was a bit of a historic game for the Jets because of this. What seemed like an uninteresting game on paper became a lot more interesting when snow was factored into the equation. And when the two teams kicked off and played the 60 minutes on the field in the inclement weather, where the bravest of fans tufted out in the elements in 18 degree wind chill temperatures, the Jets were the ones who looked the better side. Doug Bryan kicked a 28-yard field goal on the opening drive of the game after the Jets drove 12 plays and 56 yards, and the Jets never relinquished the lead from that point on. Bryan hit a 41-yard field goal with no time left on the second quarter to give the Jets a 6-0 halftime lead. And that would be the final score, as in this incredibly low-scoring affair, the Jets won 6-0, officially clinching a below 500 season for Bill Cowher and company. The Steelers struggled to move the ball all day, picking up just 231 yards of total offense with their nine drives, excluding the final drive of the first half where they took it into the halftime break, consisting of five punts, two missed field goals, and two turnovers on downs. The Steelers had somewhat of a bizarre strategy where they threw the ball a ton in the weather, and it didn't work out, as Tommy Maddox went just 16 for 38, completing just 42% of his passes and averaging just 3.6 yards per pass attempt. And the Steelers, especially in the second half, were unable to stop Jets running back Curtis Martin who had 30 carries for 174 yards, averaging 5.8 yards per carry. No one loved playing on this white field more than Martin did, as his 174 rushing yards, combined with his 54 receiving yards, gave him an incredible 228 yards from scrimmage. It's tough for any player to have a better game than that without ever finding the end zone, as in the Hall of Famer's legendary career, the 228 yards from scrimmage he picked up in this game was the most yards from scrimmage he ever had in a game. And that's saying something, considering the fact that he played in 168 of them. As a side note, to learn more about Martin's legendary career and his time in New York, click the card in the upper right corner. It was one of those games that was technically close the whole way, but at no point did he ever really think that the Steelers would get anything going, as the Jets seemed to be in complete control. But there's something I might have noticed about this game that seems somewhat odd when it comes to the second half. And that's the fact that, well, there was no snow falling down. Sure, there was plenty of snow on the ground, you couldn't miss it, and it was tough to move on this field because of it. But why can't you see any snow falling from the sky? This meant either one of two things. It meant that camera technology in 2003 was incredible, and was significantly better than what we thought. Although considering the fact that CBS was still airing a lot of games in standard definition back then, I feel pretty safe in ruling this option out. Or it meant that the grounds crew just couldn't remove the snow from the field and the field got significantly worse, even though the weather got significantly better. Turns out, it was the latter option. The grounds crew just didn't remove the snow from the field. And to say that this caused an uproar with Steelers chairman Dan Rooney would be an understatement. Because let's just say he was not too pleased with the Giants Stadium grounds crew on this day, as in the true spirit of the 2003 holiday season, they were about as efficient as a person stuck in an elevator with Buddy the Elf. After the game, Dan Rooney was absolutely furious with the condition of the field at Giants Stadium. There was no reason for the field to be the mess that it was in the second half, when it wasn't snowing, and when the snow changed to rain or nothing at all. Sure, there wasn't a whole lot you could do about the first half, when it was constantly snowing. But in the second half, Rooney had a question that I'm sure a lot of people who were watching this game had, and that was why the field was still looking like that, even though the weather got better. Rooney knew about playing games in the snow, and knew what to do. Heck, he owned a team in Pittsburgh for crying out loud. So the Steelers have had their fair share of games, whether they were playing at Three Rivers Stadium or Heinz Field, that were played under those conditions. He knew what to do. And in his eyes, the Jets completely butchered the protocol and made the field the mess that it was. For starters, during this game, the Jets only had one snowplow. That was it. One snowplow to cover the entire field even though there was ample notice that there was going to be a snowstorm during this game. All the Jets had to deal with the snow was a crew of shovelers, who could only do so much, 
if they barely did anything at all during halftime when there was a significant break in the action and a chance to actually do something. Rooney criticized the way the Jets treated their field, saying they didn't have anybody there to do the job. We'll call up hundreds of kids to come out, shovel, and do cleanup work. We have all the equipment. They only had one plow. It was really bad. One plow. They should have had the equipment to really be able to really keep it as clean as they can, and kept a brush going around the field between plays. At halftime, they should have really worked on it, gone and cleaned the whole field. Rooney continued, saying that the NFL had a responsibility to get involved and look at the fields, and lay out specific protocol as to what equipment is needed and what should be done during a snowstorm like this one. And while Rooney specifically said that he doesn't blame the field for the loss, he said that some teams try to gain an advantage by making their field poor so as to level out the playing field. Honestly, these seem like incredibly valid criticisms and comments on Rooney's part. He's not blaming the poor conditions for the loss, but as an owner who has been through many snow games before, has pretty good protocol in place, and knows what is necessary to work a game in these conditions, he laid out specific things that the Jets could have done differently, and laid out to the NFL what should be done to prevent a situation like this from happening again, since it hurts players' safety and could compromise the integrity of the game. It's not like he was saying that they shouldn't have played in the snow, or like he was criticizing the field for being covered in snow when it was actually snowing a lot. He was simply saying that even though the weather was bad, the field did not have to look like that, and he's absolutely got a point. In fact, he had so much of a point that Greg Aiello, a spokesman for the NFL, said that he spoke to Rooney about the issue, and was going to follow up with the New Jersey Sports Authority, which was the group in charge of Giants Stadium. However, that's not the end of our story, because what followed was a, let's just say, interesting rebuttal by George Zoffinger, the chief executive of the New Jersey Sports and Exposition Authority. And Zoffinger took extreme offense to what Rooney said, and decided to add some fuel to the fire with one of the worst rebuttals I've ever heard in my life. As what Zoffinger said on Rooney's comments, they're just wrong. He lost the game. He shouldn't go crying about the snow. As for what evidence Zoffinger showed to suggest that Rooney's comments were wrong, he said that there were 50 people shoveling during the game, and that the previous week in the New York Giants game, more than 500 people were used to get the snow out of the stadium as best as possible. I love how absolutely terrible this rebuttal is, because it did absolutely nothing to disprove anything that Rooney said. First off, where did Rooney ever cry about the snow costing his team the game? In fact, he specifically said that he was not blaming the conditions for the loss. The way he made those comments, they sound like comments that he would have made whether the Steelers lost this game or whether they won 50 to nothing. And look, I know that wins and losses are what owners care about, but whether the Steelers won or lost this game, they were going to be mathematically eliminated from the playoff picture by the end of the day anyways, so I don't think Rooney was losing sleep over this loss. The outcome of the game was definitely not one of his motivating factors. As for the evidence presented, 50 people shoveling during the game literally proves Rooney's point, because Rooney has hundreds of people. Rooney said that all you had was shovelers. You can't say that Rooney was wrong and that you didn't do enough by only having shovelers, and then say that you only had shovelers. Rooney's complaint was that you only had one plow, which wasn't very good, because shovelers can only do so much. So, good job. You literally proved his point. And saying that you had 500 people help out with the Giants game does nothing to show what you did to help out with the Jets game, because it's a completely independent event. Aside from the fact that the circumstances were different, as the Giants job was done the night before the game, while the Jets job would have been done during the game, why should Rooney care about what you did last week? If I'm a professor and I make an exam, and the exam has a typo on it, and a student comes up to complain about the typo, what if my response was, you're wrong, there's no typo, I wrote a completely different exam last year, and there was no typo on that one. Therefore, there can't possibly be a typo on this one. That is incredibly flawed logic on Zoffinger's part. So congratulations to George Zoffinger for putting Dan Rooney on blast, only to prove with each word said that Rooney was completely in the right. As long as we're playing football in the winter, there are going to be snow games, and that's a very good thing. But a good lesson here is that, much like anything in life, you should always be prepared. If the forecast is calling for snow, and you're in an area that is known for getting snow, don't act surprised when you get snow. 
and you don't have any of the equipment necessary to handle an operation. Watching a snow game in actual snow is cool, but watching a snow game when there's no snow makes it look like the stadium operators were not prepared whatsoever, and can be frustrating to watch. Sure, the Jets won on the field on this December day, but off the field, when it came to Dan Rooney, they got a rather chilly reception. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com, and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at JaguarGator9. To see college football videos, subscribe to JaguarGator8. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.